tell you a little bit about Ashleen Yarns. We started about 19, or 2003, very humbly, so humbly, I don't even remember how small the color selection was in the yarn. From those days, how many colorways do you do now? Uh, about 100. About 100. Is this the wall behind you right now? Yes, it's a, a small version because I've only uh, done one colorway per hook. So um, normally at a show, I'll have several hooks devoted to one colorway. So we stretch out about 18 feet with the grid wall. Okay. at a show. All right, great. Now, uh, we're going to get into the specific colors or, you know, some knitted up uh, uh, examples a little bit later on. But first, let's talk about your wool. Uh, back in 2003, 2004, what was your primary wool? I was a sock knitter at the time, and that was my focus. So our primary wool was a three-ply, 100% superwash merino. Um Nylon blend? No, 100%. Okay. Uh, I always felt that you could get away without the nylon if you knit the sock properly, which right. would be tightly. Socks are different from any other garment because they're worn hard, where a sweater definitely doesn't get worn like that. So that's what I started with. We've Bought huge cones and we wound it all ourselves, remember? <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> it was terrible. And uh, we sold it for like $18 a skein. Um, and you got over like 525 yards. I mean, it was good yarn, especially to start with. And uh, But things have changed. We have lots of competition now. So... In order to stand out even a little bit, you have to think of ways that will make you different from the next booth at a show. And how are you doing that with your base yarns? With the base yarns, we uh, import our main yarn, which is English BFL, Blue Face Lester, directly from England. It's not only grown there, but it's processed and spun in England as well. Okay, now, this here, these three skeins, mm -hmm. is British BFL. Right. All right. This is actually an American BFL. Yes. And we'll jump this guy over. That's Merino. Am I right? I'm looking more white, and I'm looking more... Mm -hmm. Golden. Golden. Okay. <laughs> like this. Got it. <laughs> um, why? Why that color? It's still got lanolin in it, which makes it very different from other processes. And is that a British process? Yeah. Well, I've seen BFL from England uh, that was processed there. That's whiter. Um, I think this is unique to the mill that we use. Mm -hmm. um, I just, it just makes it a little more of a challenge to dye, of course, because you're dealing with a gold base. You're almost over dyeing a color, mm -hmm. almost like you would with yak. Yeah, and sometimes you have to neutralize that with a pale gray just to get to a point where it's going to be tr more true. Mm -hmm. um, also, at the same time, it can enhance warmer colors just, you know, the same way. Okay. Your yellows or even reds. Or more brilliant, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, and BFL takes a dye beautifully. Um, as does Merino, but I think it even takes it more intensely than the Merino does. Okay. The next grouping, I would say, of course, that we carry a lot of, would be Peg's yarn. And then it would be the Tweeds, um, which is also a BFL in the fingering weight because mm -hmm. that is available. Now, when you say Tweed, you're referring to... Polymines? Is that what the Brits call that? Yes. Okay. And it's actually uh, a nib um, nylon. Is yeah, right? it's a man-made fiber okay. that does not take the acid dyes, which is which are protein dyes that mm -hmm. they color an animal-derived uh, yarn. And so these are left. And there's brown, there's cream and there's black in here so there's different colors mm -hmm. of those mm -hmm. and so you've got to play off on that with what you are dying just for an example um same exact 
yarn. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's coming out. That's giving you more depth or, or character to your sweater it, or whatever it is. It you gives may be. a rustic feel to the yarn, right. which some people want in a sweater mm -hmm. or even in socks. It just depends on the look you want. This is Peg's uh, yarn mm -hmm. that we have Lydia um, uh, by the masterfully uh, spin force uh, or process at the mill. That's actually just a combination of these two. All right. This again is roving. Mm -hmm. I see an awful lot of inconsistency in the hairs, if you will. Right. They all they're all going in the same direction, but mm -hmm. there seems to be a little bit of cross current. There's some crossing because that process uses carding, picking and carding, and that is a different process than top. And that's what I'm. The top next, is combed. So now this other material is combed, not carded. Right. It is all going in one direction. A lot more uniform mm -hmm. as you pull it. You're still going to sit down and spin this, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So when Ashley markets this, it's braided. Same exact amount right here. This is from... Uh, Lydia's, excuse me, yes, Lydia's Peg's Mill, mm -hmm. Peg's Farm, right. okay? But now, you've got this rather fuzzy-looking uh, cake next to it. You use the phrase tag-along, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I want you to explain that in a moment, but if you look at this knitting, uh, you got a wonderful stockinette on there, by the way. I do. Um, <laughs> you can <laughs> see just how much color this tag along brings now that mm -hmm. tag along would that be called a lace weight yes it is okay so you're using basically one skein of lace weight and that's gonna that's gonna take you a long long ways isn't it yeah it goes much further than uh this bfl although this one is a, a big skein it's four ounce skein which is bigger than the average so it's a heavier skein uh it's still the same length like 250 plus mm -hmm. But um, it just goes further. The sweater over here on Cora. <laughs> <laughs> and Cora would be the name that you've given to your... My little mannequin here. Right. She's like uh, 1890. She's mm -hmm. an early one. Um, this sweater took like three skeins. Which is pretty economical. And, you know, because it's a custom done yarn, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a cheap yarn by any means, but it's still a reasonable price. Um, just to clarify, that sweater that we were just looking at that Cora is wearing, that's a pattern off Ravelry. Yes, it is. Right? It's called Oldies. Okay. And Revi, I think, is the designer's name. Uh, but oldies will get you there. Great. Now, let's go back to here with the, the tag-along, if mm -hmm. we can. Um, I know that this is one panel on a kind of a vest sweater, we yeah, would it's call a it. it's going to be a new pattern. It's a, I'm calling it a vest tunic. Um, it's a vest, but it's open on the sides. So it has some aspects of being like a poncho in a way. But um, it just seemed like a good vehicle for this yarn and to use a tag along with it. And on the close-up, you could probably see the little bit of the colored light, um, lace weight in there. While that's out, just let me put down three other... You're not married. There are other tag alongs, correct? Yes, and I'm not married to this one yet. We're still in the experimenting stage. Here you have... A uh, couple of hats. Are these two the same pattern? They're the exact same pattern, different colorways. Um, this is going to be a kit. Uh, it's going to be called the Shaker Beanie. The stitch here is a stitch the shakers used. And since we carry shaker boxes, I thought it was fitting that we use a shaker stitch. Down here, are these three different cowls? These are three different colorways. Uh, th four different colorways if you count this one mm -hmm. and three different patterns these are all on our website these are um ashley yarns patterns uh, this cowl and this one are actually the same 
pattern, just in different colorways. We had talked about the tweed. Mm -hmm. And again, those are bits of nylon that are put into Right, uh, and you can oil. see my little hairs here. This is not completely done. No, I can see stitch markers in there. Let me pull this out. <laughs> the stitch marker's still in there. And this is not one of our patterns. This is found on Ravelry 2. And it's a cute one with double pockets. We used a, a coordinating colorway on the inside. Mm -hmm. This is actually called sea, Seaweed. And this one is Splash. Those are the names of, of the yarns. your yarns the on Ashley ways. Yarns' website. Yeah. Okay. So that one's almost done. Almost. Now, this is the Merino, obviously, tweed. Mm -hmm. And this, this is the Blue Face Lester DK. And this is the Boxy Boyfriend, mm -hmm. I think. Ashley Yarns. I've handled that pattern a hundred times. Open that up. So you've got then the pocket yep. again, a bit of a curl on there. A seed stitch detailing on the side. Oh, look, I need to put that back. And a little vent on each side. All right, and that is uh, British DK in size. It's 100% BFL. Mm -hmm. And that is blue denim. Yes. And you got a nice variation all the way through mm -hmm. there. You've knitted an awful lot of socks. Yeah. All right. Now um, we've got four pair here. Um, each one of these, your patterns? Uh, yeah. Okay. And these patterns are all available on, on the website for, yeah. down, well, for download. Right? These two are um, initially uh, for the new kit. Okay. So the new kit that's going to come out actually is a new pattern as well. Yeah, it's a very simple pattern. Um, great for beginners. However, I do have the heel that I prefer in the directions, but also a much simpler heel if you are a beginner. I mean, the, the worst part about sock knitting for a beginner is it's construction. You're starting with construction right mm -hmm. away. Um, once you get it, though, I mean, it's the heel and the toe are the the main issues. So you're going to have both heels in, yes. in there. Yes, yes. Right. My heel is a combination of a flap and a short row. And where do I see that heel in front of me? Right here. Okay. It's, so it's all of them have it, but uh, you can see it a little pronounced. bit better. This is the flap. Okay. Just a small one. Mm -hmm. And then the shirt rows are here. All right. Now, what I'd like to do is step you through a good portion of our offerings of shaker boxes. If you are seeing the longer version of this video. You saw an awful lot of time we spent in Steve's wood shop. He's our partner uh, in making these boxes and he's gone through uh, in, in detail his processes. So let's take a look at some of the boxes we have. All of these boxes are offered exclusively through Ashley Yarns. Steve is our partner and we have helped design uh, an awful lot of these with fiber folks in mind. These boxes are wonderful very easy to carry around and the interior uh, of it uh, this is where you can have a full cake of yarn a pattern the smaller project that you may be working on larger has a removable uh, uh, divider there that allows you to have two different uh, cakes going. Those are our knitting boxes. Our sewing boxes again are particular to us. There's actually three variables that's going on here. First, there is a lid for this. We just put it off to the side. Um, this is a bobbin tray. Comes out fully removable. Let's add some height to the body. Here's that same tray. Comes out fully removable and you can notice four of those pegs stand a little bit higher that tray 
rests right on them. You can see that. And then the lid goes on and you're ready to rock and roll. So we have our knitting boxes, all of our sewing boxes. It's still part of that genre. We have three uh, different fabrics here. Chris is always uh, adding fabrics. These are pin cushions. These are filled with crushed walnut shells. Uh, that's the way it was historically done. Crushed walnut shells will sharpen your needles and there's no retention of water that's happening either. Now, all of these are uh, for our fabric folks. Okay, now an awful lot of people enjoy a traditional uh, uh, shaker oval box. And this is these are just some uh, example stacks. These are all in uh, cherry. These are all in sycamore. These are a cherry base with a quilted maple top. Uh, one thing I want to point out, you can see there's, there's a card here. Um, Steve keeps his logo up there. We insist on that. Uh, he's an artisan and we're not going to uh, override that. However, inside each card is the history of where that tree came down and why. So now you know exactly um, what the, the history is of the tree associated with your box. All right, well, that is all of our shaker boxes. And we do have some other uh, product line, Krista. We have handmade buttons, so don't want to forget those. They're made in Massachusetts by a couple that use Jacob sheep horns and um, salvaged deer antlers. Mm -hmm. And we also have a full line of collage square needles, knitting needles and crochet hooks. Uh, jewelry as well. Uh, shawl, shawl pins. Mm -hmm. Our shawl jewelry and uh, a few little shaker items that we actually get from the Sabbath Day Lake Shakers. And, uh, well, covers it. and your colorways are evolving. Always. Your yarns are always evolving yeah. as well. Great. Yeah, the base BFL will always be the same, but others around it will change. Okay. Uh, you're on Instagram? Uh, we're on Instagram at Ashleen Yarns and Facebook.com backslash Ashleen Yarns. Right. Of course, our website, ashleenyarns.com. But what we really love is to see you at a show. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, we really, <laughs> we'd like to see a show. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, <laughs> great. Well, thank you for your time. <laughs>